My name is Hannah Moore, and my husband and I live here in Tacoma. We lived here for six years, and we have four children, a son who's 10 and girls who are eight, five, and four, and we are in the process of adopting through foster care one or two more little ones. So I'm a mom that knows what it's like to be busy, um, and so we lead a missional community in the South End that is primarily focused on single moms. We, we live in an area of town that is really diverse racially and economically. Tons of single parent homes and kids who've been raised by one parent, and so that's kind of our mission focus. One of the things that God has been teaching me the past few years um, is what it means to be fully engaged in motherhood and fully engaged in mission at the same time. It's an area I feel like I've grown a ton in and learned and have a lot of passion for. And so I want to share a few heart lessons that has really, really helped me. One of the first things is I've learned that I really need to daily um, remind myself of the gospel and orient my heart towards mission. And um, because usually I wake up and I wake up with my kids when they wake up and the demands are instant and my focus is mostly on myself and how it's going to be a good day for me, whether I'm going to be happy. And, and so I have been learning the past two or three years, if I can sit there with Jesus for a few minutes even, and whether it's worship that I listen to, I have some particular songs or scripture passages, I just try and sit there and soak in the gospel and remind myself of all that is true about God, how he's pursued me, who I am, what my purpose is, and that I'm fully loved and I am accepted and I'm forgiven and all my needs have been met. Just kind of sit there and soak all that in and then from that point say, okay, if I'm so deeply and fully loved, then then who do I get to love and pursue today? Whether my kids or my husband, my neighbor, wh whoever it may be. And so um, that's been huge for me. And it's not a moment that is really um, quiet. My kids are up, they're running around, I'm drinking my coffee, I'm trying to wake up but it's been huge for me as I try and faithfully be on mission um, in my life. A second thing that I have learned is that God has been wanting me to understand what does it really mean to be a friend of sinners like his son Jesus. And a few years ago, a couple of the things that he, about five years ago, he really placed in my heart, he kind of defined that term for me. And one was that if I went away for a few weeks, then um, friends in my life would, would miss me but I would have friends in my life that don't yet know Jesus that would know me well enough and live enough life with me that they would miss me if I was gone. And I had gotten a text about five years ago from a friend who didn't know the Lord, and she said, I miss you, I can't wait for you to be back. And I felt like God said, that's what I want, Hannah. I want, the, I want a number of people in your life. And along with that, he was just showing me, and, and I want um, people that don't know me yet to call you one of their closest friends. So if someone said, who are your closest friends? That Hannah would be one of the names they would say. And um, because I think that it's super easy for us to spend all of our lives and our close friends are Christians, people that already know Jesus. And then we have a lot of acquaintances that don't know him yet. And they stay as acquaintances because we have a hard time prioritizing our time and really pursuing people. And he just said, I've pursued you, I pursue my children, and then I want you to pursue others. And so um, any of the relationships that I've had that people have come to faith in Jesus, it's been a lot of pursuit on my part initially. And the Spirit saying, pursue this woman, pursue this person, text her, call her, invite her, um, because that's how she's going to experience that my love, is by you pursuing her. I pursued you first, you know, and I'll enable you to do this. So that's been a huge thing. Um, and the third thing I've learned is that for me to just have a planner, and I have a section in it that's titled People, and I put it in there myself. It's just a simple planner from Target. But it really, um, I basically make sure that every week there's someone, there are people that I'm trying to love. And I'm asking the Lord on Sunday or Monday, look at my week, who do you want me to pursue this week? Someone that doesn't know you. And the challenge for myself is that every week there would be at least one person in that list that doesn't yet know Jesus that are friends of mine. And I'm good to, so that I can really prioritize my time towards them. Some really practical things that I've learned about being on mission are, um, one thing is just to join what's already going on in your city. Joining maybe a um, secular mom's group that's already meeting in your city. There are a ton of moms who are lonely and want friendship there. Doing weekly play dates is something you would do anyway with your kids. And just being intentional about that and maybe doing it through Facebook. We're doing that right now this summer. Every Wednesday we go to a different park. It's do it through Facebook and invite our friends. 
Um, stroller workouts are awesome. Moms are always wanting to get in shape. Um, and then I think just really using your backyard and your home intentionally, having people over just one person at a time with their kids is huge. It's very personal. It communicates care to them. Um, some of the struggles that I've experienced uh, being a mom and trying to be on mission, one is just the, the struggle between our flesh and our spirit that we experience anyway. And there's always going to be your, the desires of your flesh and the spirit wants you to do other things. And it says in Romans there will be a constant tension. And I really do feel that as a mom. Like, you're, you're tired anyway. There's a lot going on. But really, I'm trying to learn to sit and listen and ask, well, what do you want me to do? My life is yours. You know, I don't want to just do what I feel like doing in the moment. I want to follow the Spirit. And so stopping and praying and trying to be obedient. And so many times after, when by God's grace, I've done something the Spirit was leading me to do with someone who needed me to spend time with them, I look back and I'm like, that's totally what I was supposed to be doing. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you, Jesus, for helping me to obey. So I think being aware of that tension, um, it's a struggle, but being aware helps. Another thing is that um, as moms, our capacity changes all the time for how much time we have, because we may have had a new baby, or one of our kids go, starts going to school, or your naps change from two to one, or basically, it seems like every few months as a mom, your life changes. And so learning to roll with that and go, you know what, God has good things planned for me long ago to do right now, and so I just need to pray and ask him to show me who are the people he wants me to love. At some seasons, you may have a pretty big capacity to pursue people, other seasons, you may have one or two people, and that's all you can manage for the next few months that you want to pursue consistently. And I think another struggle is that if you um, have a n number of Christian friends, you can very easily fill up your time with um, just hanging out with people who, who you already know and you're comfortable with. And if you live intentionally on mission, you have to really prioritize, and that means not being able to spend all the time that you want to. And that's really a beautiful thing, though, not to. But um, I think that is a struggle at times, though, because that's a temptation for us is just to hang out with people that we already know really well. I would say that the biggest fruit of being a mom that's trying to live on mission is joy. <laughs> and um, I was reading last week, and John and Jesus says, he basically says there's so much joy for the planter and the harvester. And he's basically saying there's so much joy to be had from sharing the good news about me. And I feel like in the last few years, I have been overwhelmed and surprised by the joy that's happened in my heart as I've seen people come to faith or come closer to Jesus. Yesterday, my husband and I, we got to baptize um, our neighbor and friend. And um, I never imagined she would come to know Jesus. She moved in a year and a half ago and um, her son ended up dying in a car accident, who was my son's age, and miraculous story, and she came to know Jesus. And if someone asked me, like, what has been the highlight of your year, of your entire life this last year, my husband and I would both say, it's Alicia. She came to know Jesus. There's been a crazy amount of joy in that whole process for us and for, um, for our kids. So um, anyway, that's been awesome. So I think joy, joy is the fruit of being on mission. The other thing that's been huge for me is I feel like God's been saying, you know, motherhood and mission, they work together. They're not opposing things. They don't need to compete for time. If he's called me to be on mission, then that's going to help me be a better mother. And it's really going to help my kids understand the gospel in a way that they wouldn't. And even this last year, they began praying for our neighbor before my husband and I did. They had faith that she would come to know Jesus after she lost her son. And I have seen them understand the gospel in ways I don't think they ever would have if it hadn't been for us being on mission to that family. And so for me as a mom, it's been cool for God to say, Hannah, like, when you love others in my name, your kids are getting me, and they're going to long for me. I think any advice that I would have just from my own experience, if you're a mom that wants to love people well in your life that don't know the Lord yet, would be to be super prayerful about your time and just ask the Spirit to help you be intentional in how you use your time and continually pray about it because life changes and our seasons change and keep praying like, hey, what, who is it now? Who are the people now that you want me to love um, and pursue and engage? Just pray a lot. And the other thing I would say is there have been times where I have felt just pretty cold towards people and maybe numb about them even needing the gospel. And when I've sensed that in my heart, I've started to pray, pray that God would break my heart 
for those that don't know him. Because to be without God is to be without hope. And that's an awful place to be. And when I've prayed that prayer, he has really done that. He has broken my heart. Like, I want to cry over people's lostness. Because then, and I want that to repel me to love them. So to be, just to pray for broken heart for those around you.